Rembrandt does not only create paintings, he also creates etchings quite famously. Now, many artists took up etching after its perfection in the 16th and 17th centuries. Etching also allowed greater freedom than en engraving. The plate was coated in wax and the wax was etched to expose the plate's surface. This was then dunked in acid to eat away the exposed metal, something that we've talked about in the past. But prints would be a major source of income for many artists, including Rembrandt. And he frequently will rework them for new editions. The reason these are so important is they can be mass produced. Of course, they have printing presses at this point and they can reproduce these rapidly. You could create a few hundred or a few thousand images, each one selling for only the equivalent of a couple of dollars. But while well, you start adding that up, it becomes a very impressive income. We also see the idea of stages. Now, these plates will be reworked along the line. What we have are the original plates today. This is kind of an ethical issue. If you have Rembrandt's original plate and you print it today, is it really an original Rembrandt? And that's where the reworkings come in because people argue over what is and isn't original, whether prints are or are not original. Maybe only the prints in his lifetime are considered original. Everything else is a copy. We don't know. But the way we track this from an appraisal in our historical perspective is looking at stages. Many of these paintings will have set stages. Each stage really is based on reworking the print. And here we see the same print having been reworked as we see on the right. And you see those changes that have taken place. Suddenly there's a giant void in the center, whereas here there had been a crowd. We see far more detail and shadow. Darks have been highlighted. It's been altered. And so this can give us an idea of when a print was made. The reason you need these stages is the copper plates on which these etchings and engravings are done are fairly soft. They also fill with ink and everything else, so they have to be cleaned and slowly reworked. And you can, can, you can really see a situation where someone comes in to rework it, alters a couple of small details, and then 10 years later, someone else reworks it, does the same, and you get plates that shift over time, here from the beginning on the left to the end product on the right. But we are here to talk about the 100 Gilder print which is originally known as Christ with the sick around him receiving the children. The common name changed due to the popularity and price of the work. It was originally sold for 100 guilders. Here, the image is depicted using both etching and engraving. Very, very common because etching allows for a large amount of composition to be done fairly quickly and engraving allows for fine detail. Here, we see the humanity and the humility of Jesus rather than the pomp and circumstance that we're used to in Catholic art. Christ is preaching and blessing the blind, sick, and lame. They have a direct connection to Jesus. And the figures are awash in a light that's emanating from Jesus himself, symbolic of himself as the light of Christianity. Now we will see a second duller light coming in from the right. This gives it a place within the terrestrial plane. So instead of seeing a miracle happening in heaven or some other spiritual place, we're getting the idea that this is happening on earth, that this is happening someplace that's a little bit ambiguous. We don't really know where it's happening, but we definitely place it here. And this humanizes the concept of Jesus, very important in many Protestant faiths. It also makes him more relatable and easier to deal with on an intellectual level because, well, he's human. He's not being depicted as solely divine. And we do see those depictions sometimes, for example, in the Italian Baroque. 